Hello, hello. Welcome to the Winter Sun podcast number 14. Here again. Hello. Again. I'm Heck a guest. Yeah. You're the host. <laughs> we are back. Yeah. How are you guys doing? Are you, are you going to go first? Why me? <laughs> I don't want to. I'll go first. Okay. Yay! <laughs> 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 that's, that's like how are you yeah okay that was awesome but yari how are you how are you yeah. <laughs> no how are you <laughs> no i asked how are you exactly. <laughs> flip a coin like all right well I'm, I'm doing great summer is here i'm feeling energetic making some killer killer music mm-hmm I think I might have written my best song ever. Mm. <laughs> I'm really happy about that. What is the difference? But uh, can can't tell anything. Yet. What kind? What kind of song? Country song? No, I yeah. cannot tell anything. Oh come on! Yeah, it's a country song. It has to be a surprise. Guys, I know this man. I techno. know this. It's a country song. It's because techno. it won't work if I tell it at, in okay. advance. There has to be, what is the word? Suspension? Yeah, suspense. To who? Suspense, yeah. <clears throat> We're gonna go with the Apple technique. Radio silence, and then at some point, let's go. Yeah, then release the shittiest MacBook Pro and say, like, <laughs> you're sorry. Sorry. Yeah. And with and with Catalina operating system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, but that's glad. Nice to hear that if there's a new favorite song coming, so it means good motivation and things are going. Actually, forward. there's a lot of actually kind of record amount of new killer songs. Oh, nice. But nice. still, you know, well, all the songs are pretty much like. Uh, Halfway down, I mean, all the songs have the basic structure, the verses, choruses, bridges, solos, whatever. They are kind of, kind of set, but now, mm. kind of the crew, I would say, say kind of uh, the hard work starts with finding the right sounds and the orchestrations and synth. That's always the most challenging part. Hey, if you need a triangle player, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> and of course singing is always a challenge but now yeah. thanks to you guys and the crowdfunding now i have this semi studio where i can actually sing you know and it will save a lot of time because in the past i had to like run around in different rehearsal places and travel back and forth and you know transfer all the fucking projects you know to the laptop and it, it was so much extra you know work around work mm. but now yeah. that wor- workflow is much much faster that is good to hear that's cool that's really good and it's great that not, now that i i can sing at my home studio so because i've never been able to do that so that i can actually you know practice more singing and you know get better yeah yeah you, you did uh, some guest guest vocals for power wolf was that recorded also there yeah oh yeah i i I wouldn't have taken a job if I, you know, I couldn't sing it at home. Okay. So because I knew it, I would be, it would be easy for me to, you know, just walk into the other room and, you know, do the vocals. So I took the job. Cool. Mm. Was was that like the first real recordings you did with, the, with, the, in in there or? Actually, no. Okay. I've done something else. <laughs> <laughs> something something else okay yeah. then you will hear later nice but i've also to... been starting to a little by little start, start to sing the new album okay because some parts recorded already yeah that's cool mm. perfecto perfecto cool and yuka you you had big big things happening yeah I had something happened yeah um, the mystery guy. Something happened. Like something, <laughs> yeah. 
Trump. Regard, regarding. <laughs> just something. 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 Yeah. Oh, yeah, that thing. I was thinking of something. <laughs> uh, yeah. Mm, join Nightwish, yes, as a session bass player. That happened. And uh, congratulations, first of all, publicly from our it's side. It's congrats. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Well deserved. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. And uh, timing wise, of course, when it comes to doing different things, like, like said, I also say to the public that Winter Sun is an album making break and all of that. Like schedule wise, it fits very well at the moment. My, my position is helping the guys out playing, playing the human nature tour until next year. So, uh, of course, the world pandemic situation, we don't know how shows can be played and everything. So, yeah. everything is kind of in the open, but... Life is unpredictable. Yeah. You know and, what's going to happen. Yeah, and even more even more now, of course. Because all of us and our fellow musicians and everybody is stuck at home. You know, uh, that's very unfortunate. Yeah, it sucks. But, but I don't know. It seems to look a bit better, but, who knows, summertime looks better, but... Who knows what happens in the order again? Summertime sadness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was last year for sure. Yeah. Yeah. C can you reveal how many shows there are booked uh, altogether or what is the plan for the whole tour? There's, there's a lot in the plans, obviously. But um, how are they being able to? Will they happen or not? That is still totally in the open. Yeah. Many, many shows have been pushed to next year, obviously, from this year. And like many other bands, still, many are still trying that you to have like normal tours at the end of the year. But who knows? Who knows what will happen? So the, the next one that might be happening, is it the, the Helsinki show in Kaisenniemi? There is one, uh, Kuopio Rock, at the end of July, mm -hmm. and then the Kaisenniemi one in mid. Yeah. <clears throat> Finland's situation is, of course, better at the moment, but who knows? Yeah. Who knows? I think they just. But there's still yeah. restrictions. Yeah, and I think they just cancelled John Smith and some others yeah. for oh, really? July. But it might be that <clears throat> now thinking about it, I don't know if these festivals had uh, foreign main acts and a lot of foreign bands. This, these few might have only Finnish bands, so I don't know if it's. John Smith was a really nice festival. Yeah, yeah, that was really nice when Winterson was there. That was, oh, when we were there, that was really sure. cool. Down by the beautiful lake. Yeah, yeah. Shining and yeah. Not you know, great, me. great people, great atmosphere and vibe. Not for you. I was getting sick, remember? Oh, yeah, you had a rough time. Oh, yeah. I had a very rough time. I was like, shit. <laughs> like, yeah. but it and then we still had more shows the next day. Flew we to flew, Germany. flew to Germany, yeah, exactly, yeah. and I didn't play the show. So for what me, what show did we? We had the what was it called? Body in Blues or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blues. correct. Yeah. yeah, but the vibe of the festival, John Smith, was really nice. It was mm, right yeah. behind the stage was the lake, and yeah. and we got those John Smith winters and beers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, beer. true. That okay, I didn't even try. They, oh, <laughs> they went fast. <laughs> that I remember. I still have it unopened, like saved. Be you quick do? or be dead. <laughs> that's wow. already that's already kill you by now. Then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, it's like a... open a first sip and like no name. Yeah. <laughs> hey, talking about beers. <laughs> oh, there he goes again. What is that? It's it's a punk brew dog. Non-alcoholic punk, punk AF. Yeah, punk AF. Let's keep the AF as it, it is. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't have I don't have any beer stuff, but I I experimented at home this Coca Cola Cheers. Mentos thing, and it's still foaming behind me there. Uh, <laughs> you did? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had to jump to the sky yeah. after a few days. Ah, still... that hit the spot. <laughs> really? Don't want to know which spot you're talking about, but all right then. <laughs> the spot. Mm. Yeah, it's this Yaris non-alcoholic beer hit in him, you know. Very nice spot. For, yeah. But this is actually <laughs> really nice non-alcoholic idea. Okay. Uh -huh. not, not the best, but 
I give it six out of ten, Ola England style. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, right. that's good. Yeah, it's good that there are those non-alcoholic refreshments as well mm. around nowadays. That's yeah. Really cool. Like, like vodka straight from the glass. <laughs> right from the bottle. Nani. Nani. <clears throat> yeah. Cool. How yeah. about you, Asim? Yeah, I've been all right. I've been quite like burnt out actually last month. I've I've literally been burnt out like after every week. I don't know. I've been feeling a little bit. What off. the hell? Too much yeah. sun in Finland. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. You see, no, no, no. The sun is burning. No, right there's now. Well, frying, frying you. Yeah. At least look at you. You're in the skies. You still have a very cool temperature. Like you know, you're up there. The sun is. Yeah, up. the the Coca-Cola Mentos foam is blocking the sun. <laughs> exactly. Are you are you craving for Pakistani sun? Fuck no. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> It's 41 degrees over there, Celsius. Look, oh. and now we're hitting. Yeah, now we're hitting spots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now we are hitting the spots exactly. Yeah. But what's with the burnout stuff? What's up? Uh, the, the, just just feeling off, you know, with the whole the whole thing about the whole situation basically being just mm. unstable, like so to speak, not knowing what the hell is happening. No surety of something that oh well the things would happen or not gonna happen what's gonna happen what's not gonna happen less than that this year i got unfortunately the fucking allergy as well of birch and pollen so welcome that, to finland i know the feeling that yeah, fucking me messed me up i mean this is the worst thing that has happened to me because i thought that i would be the last guy would be having this thing and now this was like oh yeah, so yeah. Really bad so that's why it was the Do you have any medication for the shit yeah, I started taking these allergy pills and like they have helped, but antihistamine. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah. But I hate this anyways, the medication and bullshit like this, but still have to. There was no other choice, you know, that's the last resort. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But then um Is yeah, it I, better? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But then I stopped like I took some days away from streaming as well, and I took some days off anyways to try to, you know, kind of like shut down and restart and try my best to come back to full motivation but mm. it's been it's been heavy because i hate routine so i'm the guy who really hates routine and it's been becoming a routine the same thing that yari said like you know, getting up from home coming to this studio space then going home is like wait it, it's the same routine it's like since a year i've been doing the same shit. well i haven't seen well i've seen one person since new year my aunt. <laughs> what? Amazing. I went to install <clears throat> her like a TV, uh, like a hub, TV hub. Yeah. I, my guess That's the one person there. I've seen in six months. No, not the mailman. <laughs> so or hermit mode. Whoa. Oh, man. Wow. And you're liking it. Uh, I mean, no, not really. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm a kind of person I need time alone as well surely but too much is too much yeah that's what i meant for me it has mm. become way too much it's like way fucking too much i'm like dude what the f but the actual fuck i mean of course i'm very interactive on but the tomorrow is sauna time so why are you revealing everything man <laughs> soon too soon too soon it's like hey where's the suspense you talked about it the suspense now it's gone yeah but this won't be released maybe until tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Nani. Nani. So yeah. what? You're gonna have it's a not live, man. sauna time or what? Actually, yeah. We, Yari wrote me. I think he wrote me last yeah, night. We have we have male strippers booked and everything. <laughs> oh. Even I did not know that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that is really surprised. Like, all right. What, what is that called? Some jolly sausage fest. What? What, what is that? What's the word? Yeah, sausage fest. Yeah, sword fighting. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Boy. Been there, done that. Okay then. Oh. Hey, where are the tapes? Ha Happy Saturday. Where are the tapes? <laughs> they have not been released yet. The tapes. Mm -hmm. Oh, those tapes. <laughs> oh, those tapes. Yes, exactly. Those tapes I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. they were happy, happy tapes. Me. Mm -hmm. Oh man, and next, uh, next crowdfunding material. 
<laughs> the the tapes or tomorrow Saturday. Oh, the tapes. Oh, oh there could be tomorrow Saturday. Could be you know content as well. Who knows? Yeah, oh. we'll see. Yeah. Join the Patreon to know more. Hey, <laughs> Vito. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. We should start an OnlyFans page. <laughs> what that stuff? Let's yeah. let's sell our feed feed pictures. I really did not hear that, did I? <laughs> I, I wasn't sure. Was it feed or is that fe a, fix? Or is, is, that that a good, or is that a good business plan? That, that is a good business luck. plan. Thank you. At least. Absolutely. Welcome. <laughs> yes. Yes. And yeah, other than that, I've been fine. It's been like, I actually just became a... I changed my DAW from Reaper. Now I went to Ableton, so I became an Ableton artist because I always loved Ableton uh -huh. workflow. I think Devin Townsend used Ableton in the early on. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, they were quite. That's why he did a lot of kind of loops and kind of loop style music. It's it's great for electronic stuff, but now as they have upped their game and listened to the whole community, now it's becoming like more open to the. Uh, the real deal like not just loop based stuff so it's like you can do mm -hmm. all recordings and everything like that properly did in it, AW as well did it dead mouse use it yeah 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 he has been using yeah. it from day one so as hans has done things with cubase dead mouse has done things with ableton mm -hmm. those two you know very i've always been interested about it but yeah, it's a great 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 but daw but i've like... been stuck stuck in cubase and been mm. happy with it. So there's no reason to change. Doesn't yeah. our front of the house guy Tupi use Ableton? I'm no, sure. he uses Sonos, uh, pre Sonos. Yeah, pre Sonos. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Studio that was a or... weird. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Studio one. That was a weird one because Damnation guys used it as well on the first album. And I was looking, I was like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> and then I took them to Reaper as well. But now, now when they have understood Reaper, Reaper I moved on to Ableton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, that was a that was a good thing that has happened. So I've been very excited with that, and you know, fiddling around with that. So that has been keeping me. How's the learning curve been? <laughs> been very fast, very fast. The plugins are just amazing. The stock plugins are absolutely fucking incredible. Oh, cool! Absolutely incredible. So like the, but hey, you can achieve everything from any DAW basically if you know your work workflow and work around yeah but yeah. just it's like these this daw has helped me unless and until you have used another daw that's the other thing that i learned about reaper reaper is excellent reaper is the monster of the all daws because it takes no cpu um consumption <clears throat> compared to cubase or compared to even ableton but you really have shit ton of learning curve if you're entering the daw realm for the very first time so if you I've do, heard it's pretty light. Like yeah, it is very light. You base you have to install a lot of shit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Correct. So that's been that's been great. So it's been keeping me slightly busy and um... <laughs> oh, oh no nay. First allergy. God bless Africa. Oh, oh sorry, uh, God bless um you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's used to. I'm used to that thing. But hey, maybe you should come down from the clouds now a little bit, like because it's getting cold there. You're getting no, no, no. It's not the clouds. It's this Mentos Coca-Cola foam under here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't, don't want to drown in there. Hey, Tim, how are you? Is your is your pants on? Yes. No. <laughs> yes. Yes, Tim. Because, yeah, yeah. Some, oh, yeah. mm, that's because sometimes if you if you're not wearing pants, then you could sneeze more easily. What? Because your feet get cold. What What's do the they time? have to do with the pants? Yeah. If you don't, if you're not wearing pants, your feet get cold. But, my, but I need socks for my feet. Exactly. What? I need pants for the legs. <laughs> <laughs> right? What? what is this discussion? <laughs> Like, Let's get provoked. Well, you fucking started it, man. Exactly. <laughs> oh, the pants. Well, you know what? You know what? Uh -huh. Guess if I'm wearing pants. <laughs> I am wearing. I'm not going to stand up now. 
everybody stand <laughs> up. Stand everybody up. stand. For the champion, <laughs> stand up. <laughs> okay, how is Dan uh -oh. doing? Is Dan wearing good. pants? All good. All good. Thanks. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm wearing shorts here. Oh yeah, no. Uh, I, like well, that what you that's what you say, yeah. Yeah. It depends. But there are different sizes of shorts. <laughs> Are you wearing like Lem Lemmy Kelmister kind of shorts or? No, no. Yari has pitka calcer on for sure. You can Google <laughs> that cost whatever they need. Sorry. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 been all good here. Uh, yesterday we just had like a uh, really sunny, warm day uh, since a since a long time. First one here in in Zurich, so that was really nice to be outside and and uh, yeah, looking forward to doing some swimming outside soon. What's the temperature? Uh, uh, today it's a little bit cloudy. It's probably twenty-five ish. Oh wow! All right. But it gets around thirty when it's like really sunny. Damn. Mm. How is the guitar playing? Guitar playing because of the temperature, or, or, or just in general? <laughs> <laughs> what is happening here? Yeah, it's it's too hot. So you these have these to play topics are all related. Hands. We're well, not going to answer to any questions in this yeah, podcast. Yeah, didn't even We're going to have three hours. Of, <laughs> like, this is perfect. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, my interruption. Yes, please. Yeah, no, it does get a bit, bit sweaty. Um, we have... You mean guitar playing? No, it's guitar playing. Okay. Does, does. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we live in a, an old house. Got like morning sun on one side of the building and then... Uh, evenings on one side of the building so you always have to kind of like you're running uh, around play. with the guitars back and forth exactly depending like depending on, on where the sun is you have to so you have, <laughs> move. you have morning sun evening sun and you play in winter sun like excuse me what's happening here like do I, should we be concerned now <laughs> and on top of that it's goddamn hot for you god damn man i, I i'm you're, i'm sorry you're all around the sun man yeah damn yeah. man I have Sound as it gets. <laughs> I have morning wood. <laughs> hey, this is not this is not non-alcoholic beer, I tell you that. <laughs> I don't know what you say. There's wood in my belly. Is, is this now all of a sudden? Oh dad. And the oh, morning yeah. sun is shining to my balcony. The morning wood to the more oh, your yeah. balcony. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> it was this like a jump, jump immediate sub to the only fans? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, so I, I'm sorry, I didn't get it. Actually, I didn't get he's it, doing a great advertisement like Apple does <laughs> silence, and then poof, I have morning wood. Like, <laughs> 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 the, see the morning wood, so in my only fans. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's let's stick to Demo's answer now, please. Continue. Yeah, otherwise, it's been it's been all good here, keeping myself still uh, occupied with teaching. Um, Smackbound starting recording the the next album in a few weeks, so kind of looking mm -hmm. forward to that. Um, and otherwise, uh, not not that much new stuff happening. Got got one new guitar and Ingve Ingve really? Monster in Strat that I'm really oh, wow. like. Uh, I just actually received it today. Uh, scallop. Student, yeah, it's full scallop. Nice. Uh, a student of mine helped me to pick it up from from a different town, and then he brought it today, and and I didn't get to try it that much yet, but it seemed pretty cool. How's the condition? Uh, it's it's a little bit uh, banged. It's it's got some wear in the body, but uh, I thought that it doesn't matter. I'm well, gonna play it anyway. What about thread work? Uh, that seemed fine, and I'm anyway gonna give it like a full full setup and clean it up and everything. So does it smell like ink? <laughs> I, I don't think so. I, I, I've seen Ingve one time in the front row, and I think he had like super strong perfume. Uh, and oh. I don't think this guitar smelled anything like that. Okay. So you did smell Ingve? I think so. Or then somebody else in the front row had like super strong perfume. <laughs> it could be also, but, but I somehow thought oh, this could this could be Ingve smell. Mm, virtually, like virtual. Virtual kind of guitar solos and nice perfume. What a show. <laughs> yeah. 
at least you could remember it like it was in yeah. you know like so i've heard about david coverdale for instance as well that you meet the guy and it's like wow you start feeling all bloomy and stuff uh, okay That's good like okay <laughs> fair enough oh uh, yeah like the michael <clears throat> shanker <laughs> Three, two, one, zero. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's actually a perfect was... bridge to to our first question we could do um uh let's see uh Akonit asks uh i know that some bands have perfume in their merchandise rumstein for example my question to all of you if you would launch a fragrance <clears throat> what will be the smell of winter sun and Yari. what is your what is your favorite smell Yari, what would you like no, to me, smell man. like? <laughs> what? Cherry blossom. Like this background. Nah. Mm. <laughs> I, I, would, I would say that we mixture our sweat and have like a, some musk. <laughs> musk. Yeah, mixture of sweat and cherry blossom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think. No comments. I'm just like <laughs> enjoying. Uh, the, the second part maybe, of the question was uh, any any favorite smells that you want to reveal. Every, any favorite smells in general or smells yeah. of perfume in I'm general? A, I'm I'm a big fan of Davidoff. Like that's cool water. Just, it's one of my favorite perfumes. So if you want to compare my taste in that sense, then that would be one reference to check out. From men's side, I don't know about women's perfume. <clears throat> well, I, I like the smells of like summer cabin, like the sa sauna and wood burning and uh, that's know, great summer. I I wanted to say a bit similar, like pine forest, like the what is the yeah yeah kind of like pine needle forest smells. Yeah, I like the smell of rain a lot, like especially after a hot day and when it then rains. Oh, yeah. Oh, you mean during the rain? That is really nice. After the rain, usually when there's a lot of moistness in the air. Yeah. yeah. One 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 thing I wanted to do actually, I wanted to capture, if that is ever possible, the time that you're cooking onions, and when you're frying the onions, the smell of that. If somebody could capture that, that is excellent. Not the onion on it on its own, but particularly when you're frying it, that smell. Yeah. <laughs> Gasoline station. <No. laughs> Oh yeah, I mean, hey, yeah. That is something yes. bizarre. I have to agree. That's on really it. bizarre. Putting the stuff in the car and it smells like oh, and also oh. and also sellers. Some sellers. What about a shoe store? Leather shoe. Yeah, I guess. I, I I don't know. Some fresh shoe. Oh, now we're going to the only fans thing. Yeah. <laughs> it was like okay. God damn it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, for sure. So, Maybe we um, should take the sweat of Riyadi's leather pants off the stage and then. Preserve. Oh, <laughs> gasoline mixed with cherry blossom <clears throat> and fried yep. onions. <laughs> one, one more smell that I, I have to say I really like is the Dunlop lemon oil on the fretboard. Mm. I like that one. Yeah, lemon is this great smell. Precisely. Fish, I was just going to say the same as well because CK1 has a very good citrusish kind of, you know. The white one, the CK one original, uh, mm -hmm. that has a very good, like, very nice um, citrus. Citrit. What about the Citrus scent? What about the scent? What about the scent of a woman? <laughs> Total silence. <laughs> o only fans. Only fans. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There's a movie. Well, it really depends. It really depends. Oh, some women can smell like shit, as like men. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is very true. Frankly, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, but generally the women perfume, like it really, really is. I'm very particular on that as well. Like some, I don't like super rosy kind of a vibe. Ah, like ugh. that's too. Guns and rosy. 
Guns and Roses, yeah. Guns Axel, and Roses. Yeah. Axel Rose. I don't know. Where did my lemon oil go, by that the way? That can be, though, a suffocating moment if somebody uses way too much perfume. It's like, mm -hmm. fuck free, like. Yeah, too much is too much, for sure. No. But, um... Hmm. <clears throat> I'm trying so, to find my yeah, lemon that's, oil. That's happened sometimes. You're in a somewhere bar or something. Like, well, what the hell is... Who's wearing that perfume? <laughs> yeah. Like, crazy smell. Yeah. In the old days, it was better that everybody smoked <clears throat> cigarettes inside. You didn't smell anything except the cigarettes. <laughs> it was better. <laughs> no, it, no, it wasn't. No, it they, wasn't. they smoked also in planes. Yeah, yeah just imagine that. Like, yeah. in confined space. There, there were still times when they did not smoke in the place anymore. There was one heavy metal band that I know that one of the guitar players of that band started smoking a cigarette and the stewardess came like, hey, you need to put that off immediately. No, no, really? yeah, yeah, I just smoked it only this, only, only this one and then I'm done, yeah, yeah. What the hell? Priceless. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. That is crazy. Yeah. yeah. So there we go with that question about perfumes. I'm still trying to find my lemon oil. That's a... Should we do a, our own frequency? Frequen frequency. Fre frequency. <laughs> frequency is for sure. Frequency, yeah. How do you say it? God damn it. Fragments. 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 Frequency. Mmm. This is nice. Is that the same? That yeah. I love 65. Yeah. yeah. I have it Here we are. Two Second meters FM. that way. Oh man, now we're revealing OnlyFans stuff. Now that's everybody loves. Where is Yaris? Right over there. Mm. He has a better, better thing in his hand at the moment. Do we have an endorsement? Uh, no. Download. Now we can. Now we should. Oh, hey, hey Dunlop. You saw that. Yeah. See? Yeah. <laughs> Let lemon us Dunlop, please. <laughs> <laughs> lemon. <laughs> lemon. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, so, do do we have any? Um, no. Conclusion to this. <laughs> Winter sun. Oh, sorry. Conclusion. Yeah. Uh, Something to think about. Something to think about. Exactly. I mean, it's it's hard to say because we four have a different taste. You know. So I mean, like. Well, we can do four seasons. What <laughs> one fro uh, cherry blossoms, fried onion, <laughs> sweat, <laughs> and what was the one? Gasoline station. A gasoline station. Wow. Ta -da! <laughs> there you go. Join OnlyFans to get a, get a sample. <laughs> hey, hey. Okay. Um, I, I guess we move on. Next step and... is ba selling bath water. Yeah, we're now only going to talk about these podcast questions and not anymore only of bath. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Winter and bath water. Fried onion. <laughs> bath water. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Next question, please. Cool. We should tell yeah. our fried onions. And, okay, Sarah, uh, the next, please. Then uh, Sami Leppavuori asks uh, this is for everybody since Nightwish has already stolen Kai and Jukka from Winter Sun. How do you see the future of live shows for Winters and now? Oh, it's not stolen, it's infiltration. <laughs> <laughs> infiltration, yeah. So, I mean, Winters had enough oil, I guess. Still, when they have one Asim choice, then they can fire the rest and I can join in. <laughs> <laughs> and night, which oh. will be Winters on. <laughs> that, that is the... the circle is complete. <laughs> I never thought about this, but now I can honestly see that there is a master plan behind this. Yeah. It makes sense. Right. Well, it has <laughs> happened before in Finnish heavy metal. Yes. Original members get kicked off, and then the band is whole like a whole new band. Yeah, but this is like the, this thing that what you said that everybody joins in, and night which turns into winter song. That's <laughs> That's just marvelous. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, but, but I, I yeah. think like uh, 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 nobody has stolen anybody. Basically, it's a free world. It's an open choice. So, 
I mean, as Yuka said clearly here as well, that he's a session bassist. So, you know, he's mm. helping Nightwish out for the... He just kind of like did answer right there in the beginning as well that basically Winter Sun is in the recording mode at the moment or like album production mode at the moment. And of course, by the time uh, we are not going to be doing anything live wise. So it's not that something is being compromised here. He has time to do the things with Nightwish and, you know, so does Kai. Kai yeah. is still our drummer as well. Yeah, it's a free world and uh, it's great. We're very happy for you for this opportunity, and uh, yeah, because we are, aren't doing anything at the moment, so everybody needs to make their money somehow, you know, make a living. Otherwise, you would have to take maybe some office job or something, <laughs> <laughs> or the, perhaps, or, perhaps, yeah. or only fans considered, or only fans. <laughs> <laughs> Only, only office fans. Yeah. Only office. office. <laughs> <laughs> nee. Wow, cool. Yeah. Oh. By the way, I I started watching like I watched two episodes of The Office with Steve Carell. Uh -huh. I, I haven't watched it. It's good. But isn't the original one the British one where Ricky Gervais? Is? Gervais. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the real one. That's the real deal. Well, Should be the good. real. Nah, I don't know. I mean, it felt. Okay. Over the top a little bit, but kind of. Then I won't watch it. I don't think it was just I was bored, so I tried to do that. So office fans only. Office. Fans. <clears throat> no. But yeah, when it comes to me being somewhere or every all of us being in different bands, doing this and that, and schedule was I think there's yeah everyone is in some different band. Well, except yeah. me. Yeah, but I think there is time for everything when, when, when things are happening. That time for be. everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How is time? Doing. Uh, How is more. time doing? <laughs> I okay. mean, are you asking for real? I don't know. Nee, dear. Well, it's still the same same situation. I, I'm not working on it mm. at the moment. Yeah. I'm working on something else that is really cool. Ta da! Yeah. Wor working there on Elsa. Go. What? Something else. Oh. Yes. <laughs> 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 yeah. I was like, well, what? Working on Elsa. Nee. Okay. Which okay. Like Amazon has Alexa. Google has what did Google have? I don't remember. But uh Okay Google. Yeah. And Siri was there. No, Winters and has Elsa. <laughs> <laughs> no nee. Siri is my favorite girl. Yeah, she knows everything. Always listens to you and laughs, laughs with you when you laugh. Yeah, she understands me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good. Mm -hmm. hey, she doesn't. Else? She doesn't judge me. Oh, you think? Mm. Or, or you know? At least not yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. No, nay. So, so, so yeah. to clarify, uh, um, th there's no Winterson show plans at the moment. Right, and uh, no, nope. we don't know when live shows are even going to start happening anyway. But but like since the album album production is now the the main focus, then we don't know when live shows would be uh, a thing for Winters and anyway. Yeah. So and then Indeed. when when the time comes, then we'll see what the situation is, and there's always a you know way to find a solution. To like that. we have done so far. No. Yeah. Exactly. Great, great solution. Mm. It's like how the whole Finnish scene is like a family helping each other out. Yeah. Do that. Do that. That's nice. Mm. Yeah. Um, there was another question. I think we talked about this in, in like past podcast, mm -hmm. but already a while ago. Somebody asked again in, in YouTube comments Would Winterson ever do a stream concert? 
Sure. Oh, I caught up. My connection just caught up. What was the question? Uh, would Winterson ever do a stream concert? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think it's possible. Yeah. Nothing All in. against it. All in for that. Yeah. We'll just have to. Not at the moment, but uh, we'll see in the future if we can do real shows. We'd rather do that. Mm. But if there's still a pandemic going on in. I don't know some years, then for sure we can think about it. Yeah. I mean, if the new album has come out, then of course that would be a good option to do. Yeah, I think it was pretty kind of eye-opening to to see the Nightwish stream thing last week and and like how you reached what was it, 108 countries, people from 108 countries yeah. or something. Yeah. And, and how many people was it altogether? Uh, or do you know? Fifty thousand, I think. Yeah. I, so I would love to do it in our own Windows on headquarters. Yeah. That would be cool. We could set everything perfectly. Not like the Sonic Pump Studios, but our own own place. Maybe it could happen before that as well. Maybe. Yeah. I, I think future will tell. Right. E even when when touring eventually you know, starts, there's still going to be a lot of places that we won't be able to go. So it would be nice also for those people from countries that we can't visit then that they, they yeah. would be able to have similar yeah. experience. Exactly. In, in some, some amount streaming stuff might, might stay also to have these different sort of experiences. You can check at your, on your sofa. So we, we all have to come to, you know, evolving the whole industry as well into becoming, making it become hybrid somehow. Mm. This is inevitable. I mean, like, this yeah. is done. It's gonna... No, I was actually thinking long, long before the pandemic hit, like, uh, Skype shows or, like, uh, streaming shows mm -hmm. in the internet. And I believe someday, you know, the, you know, the displays and, uh, you know, the monitors, they will get bigger and bigger and maybe in the sci-fi future, the whole wall will be like a huge monitor and it will feel like, a, or even holograms or something like that. And it will feel like, and like the whole band is right there. And you're gonna watch the show that way. Well, that's inevitable. I mean, VR is already doing VR, basically virtual reality in that sense. I'm talking about the virtual reality in going in the virtual reality, not the virtual reality shows, but particularly being part of a virtual reality, um, that has already taken a step forward. I mean, a lot of games, like Elon Musk has said that, not just Elon Musk, but this was way... Neural Link shows. <clears throat> Good. Yeah. yeah. Let's go into the Matrix. Exactly. Yeah. Well, who, did, did another topic, we probably are already in one. We don't know, but um, this is inevitable. This will come forward, like... One way we accept it or deny it, but this is what's going to happen. People who denied the mobile phones, they mean you, mean you, mean you. Well, what can you do? We are like half cyborg right now. We can't even function without a mobile phone. Unless. Yeah, I still remember when I got my first iPhone. It was the sec second model, I think the 3G or something. Mm -hmm. And I was showing to my friends, look how cool this is fucking touchscreen and everything. Yeah. <laughs> and then, who, who the hell needs that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's stupid. <laughs> exactly. Now they all have one. No, yep. it's the way that we think. Who needs this or who needs that? Well, wait for five years, then we'll see. So yeah, I mean, those are the inevitable things. I mean, same way that I'm talking about, like everybody is able to do with the MIDI things, like so on. Like, why can't we have a guitar, which is not a guitar, which is MIDI, and you can accomplish fucking everything, like. That, that is, well, we have already that, Odin too. Yeah, yeah, no, what I mean is like physical form of it, so to speak. You can, you know, change and swap the pickups in that sense as well. You mm. don't need to emulate things. You don't need to basically own hundreds of guitars with different. Yeah, the guitar is still really stone age instrument. <clears throat> well, because we are kind of like, you know, never minded in that sense. We don't want to lose that element because electronic yes. music how it started was on the basis of like hey this is what you can swap and do so people were acquainted with that 
Yeah, anything tries. new that comes around, it's always like me. Live stream choice. What is this? Meh. Yeah, it's weird how kids are technology moves so slowly. It's that as well, but it's also that people do live stream so much of as well. Yeah. Mm. Not maybe not just against change. Some people oh, like oh, Japanese yeah. toilets, some don't. <laughs> <laughs> but the Evertune was really a game changer. That's what that was like mind blowing. Like new thing that Bliss, came, yeah. came to guitar. I, I'm still happy with my never to. <laughs> so you will get it soon. <laughs> mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. As soon has been like since five years. I'm getting a little bit bothered by Evertune as well. Like guys, I mean, sure. <laughs> I mean, you, yeah. you need to hassle the Evertune guys. I, I bomb them with emails. Yeah, bomb them with emails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Azim got excited. Huh? <laughs> 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 oh, hmm. Interesting. What do you say? <laughs> Next question, please. <laughs> All right, we had a little technical issue, but now we're back. Uh, the next question is about touring, and we're going to be combining a couple questions actually here. Uh, Marlene is asking or saying. Uh, COVID has tracked on and on, and touring seems a distant memory. For each of you, which tour is your personal favorite because of the experience you had? Uh, I understand touring involves a lot of hard work, but which one was also the most fun so far? And then, um, kind of in the similar uh, question, Erika Evil is asking, sometimes you tour with other bands. Is there any band that has made you feel uncomfortable or uh, whose uh, behavior makes you think that you don't want to tour with them again? If so, which band? Probably not going to name any uh, names here, but uh, just overall experiences. Uh, so positive tours, negative tours. Okay. Uh... Uh, touring with the Guns N' Roses was pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, also with what well, was Metallica as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jason Houston was acting up weird and stuff. Oh yeah, back then. Yeah, back then. <laughs> but other than those, I don't see any. I don't remember any like uh, problems with any band. Yeah, me neither. Or do you guys? Not really problems. I do remember some hierarchy ego crap. I do. And especially being on the newbie on the road, sometimes how certain higher this bands... long time ago or reason? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Long time uh, ago. Treat you. I'm just coming to the point that everybody should be treated equally yeah. without yeah. any fake, fake statues, bullocks or something like that. I remember some uh, particular tour manager not treating us very well in the beginning, <laughs> but I guess that's uh, <laughs> that goes. <laughs> That goes, oh, yeah. you know, that's part of being a, like a opener band. But but from still e even on on that tour, the, the bands were great all of them. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, there has really hasn't been any super yeah, drama. Yeah. That that's the thing as well. Sometimes you know when it comes to like <clears throat> working in a bigger machine, that generally the band members get affected by the whole uh, scenario which the band members even wouldn't know about like the same way that Tim was saying right now the tour manager was like off putting in that sense but the band in that sense was bands have been always nice so it's always mm. either or there's this one dude who might be in the you know managerial side of things would just throw off the things and it would feel like what the hell is going on but i think the overall vibe just as always has been pretty good and I think for me personally, the U.S. tour has been the last U.S. tour that, uh, well, the U.S. tour as 70K could be considered as tour. Yuka said that earlier, but it got cut off, unfortunately, because of the technical difficulties. But uh, U.S. tour was amazing 2018. That is like, that for me is one of the finest tours. And it's not that I'm saying the European tours were bad or something. It's just it was something unique because it was my first time in USA and um 
luckily due to these guys going to Canada, I had my time, fair share. To stay. Yeah, that was just caught off earlier that my best times were that Asim was not around the Canada and Russia first. <laughs> Asim, you had some quality time. Oh, I did. Absolutely. I, I experienced Seattle quite well. Then I stayed in Columbus, Ohio for four days as well. So that was amazing. No, no. He had quantity time. He had quality time. <laughs> what, what were you saying about the Canada and the uh, Russian tour? You say, uh, yeah, the quali quality versus quantity. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. Those were quality. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, those visa issues suck ass because it's not it's yeah. not our the bad, our fault. But uh, yeah. But but you have to admit you like the space on the stage. Mm. It reminded <laughs> you of the older o older days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Remi uh, reminded uh, me how old I am and older and. <laughs> 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 uh, and to clear up for those who don't know what what happened, to Asim, do you wanna? So yeah, so basically Canada did not let me in, or he didn't even didn't understand that I said like, hey, we applied for the visa for 2018. They answered us back in 2019. They let you in a year after. Yeah, they were like, well, hey, could you send better us late than never. Yeah, like what the hell? Russian visa unfortunately didn't happen because he considered the the visa invitation that I got was considered as like I am part of European Union. So he didn't kind of like because me not being part of European Union as per my nationality, the visa invitation should have been slightly different. That was the only thing. But if the visa invitation would have been correct, of course I would have been in Russia as well. Because I've toured in Russia already in 2010 with Kiwas. It was an amazing time. Really good. And um uh, yeah, I think the US tour for me still counts. The Asian tour was f fucking amazing for me as well, because <laughs> I enjoyed the most <laughs> other than these guys. I don't know. But I was always out. Why? What? I was always out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was crazy. But we had a great time in New Zealand. New Zealand was great. I mean, we all can agree on that. New Zealand was awesome. We had a day off. Yeah. We went yeah, all to tours are, you know, great in their own ways. It's hard to say which is the best. Great taxi driver trying to find. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trying to find the seals. Oh yeah. Oh man. Mm, the seals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say for me the best, or cannot say the best, but I really liked the last U.S. tour, the 2018, mm -hmm. because we really got into the rhythm as a band and made some great shows, and we filmed them. So it's always feels good to you know to do a good job for the people out there and then we stopped touring oh, yeah we had 70,000 times too oh. yeah and that was really that was nice lost. you can call that a tour Those that I said always earlier. nice yeah. Yeah. exactly that was great that was great two shows I mean it would have been nicer to have like the first two shows done already like in the first day and the second day but we had them on the second and the third day so it was like still like waiting for the third day to get over and then with this, yeah. then relaxation time. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah 70 days always really nice. Yeah. Like uh, vacation meets work. Yeah. But it's great to play wherever, whether it's yeah. a small or small or a bigger show, it doesn't really matter. Oh well, yeah, I was talking about when like for instance the biggest club show that we have done was in uh, on the Arch Enemy tour, and that was in Prague, round about four thousand two hundred people. That was crazy. Yeah, it's like an experience of its own, like a mini festival indoor. I was like, I remember still me, Yuka, and Temu. We were walking together, like in the venue, and then we were like, oh, like okay. A couple things I enjoyed about the Arch Enemy tours because because we weren't the headline, so there was less pressure, and we only played one hour set, so you could put more energy. To, to your shows be really active because if you play a two hour show you have to a little bit pace yourself so you don't die at the end of the show and you still have energy for the next days mm -hmm. the the show. <laughs> but the best best concerts are usually the ones where the audience and the band yeah. 
us together share a special moment that everybody likes it, whether it's a Definitely. small or a big show. And that yeah, it doesn't, you doesn't really matter what place it is. If the people are, you know, yeah. great and active, then it's always special. Even though, I remember the New Zealand show, we had like 100 people or something. Yeah. Uh, had a really could've, great could've life. fit more. Yeah, yeah. that was yeah. the problem. I, I remember it being a really great show. Promoter yeah. Bean. Bean. Yeah, yeah, Bean. <laughs> Bean. Bean was all about, yeah, if it would have been impossible, we would have gotten you for the next night. <laughs> he, was a, he was a master. It was great. And we had our own Winterson beer tab, which I went for. <laughs> but I also really enjoyed the uh, old, uh, I mean, 2013 US tours. Those were a bit more crazy. We did a little, a little bit more partying. Well, these days we don't do much at all. But but there's always like, a, if you party, there's you know, if you are having fun, then there's the other side. <laughs> yeah. You're not having so much fun. No pain, yeah. no pain. So these uh, days it's more professional, and I, and I enjoy that a lot. I think there's a kind of a learning curve into touring as well. When we did the first tours with Winters, and it was all about like you know being excited about doing this for the first time, and you know we really didn't know much about like routine and what to do on the road that much. I mean, of of course, like Yuka was probably the only one of us. Well, Kai, of course, as well. Kai and Yuka had had like tours before but for me and Yari that was like the first like Did we know uh, nightliner tours but one thing I, <laughs> one thing i hold dear to my heart was always seeing guy in hangover you know building his drum set <laughs> <laughs> that was always funny <laughs> he had his hoodie on <laughs> pale face <laughs> yeah but uh, but i think in the beginning like whenever you go to somewhere first time it's it's you know there's so much things to be excited about like it's just all new and everything so so then uh, that's always a of course every every show is a unique experience but then you know when you go to the same place for the tenth time it's a different impact of course and and then yeah. there's of course the trade off of like <clears throat> in the beginning and being a smaller band then usually the the conditions are not that Great in the beginning, and also with Winter Sun, the first tours we did, like we were lucky to get in the Nightliner right away. But I think we had three other bands in the same bus, or even I think three other bands in the same tour yeah, yeah. with with Nugglefar and uh, who Fear else was in the same bus? Fear yeah. My Thoughts, and was there one more? I think um, was uh, two it, on the same tour. Yeah, they, that was oh, the other. No, that, that was, was the other the, tour. Okay, yeah. Oh, with um, Amon Amar. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was, that was that, ex, that was true. Exodus, hypocrisy. Exodus and hypocrisy. So three bands in the same bus. Yeah. That, but it, anyway, like like then uh, the later tours, well, I guess we we slowed down the partying quite a bit, and then like then you like get to appre appreciate a little bit more, like you know, sleep and you know having nicer meals, and you know that's what I mean with the learning curve. Like in the beginning, this was like it was all survival attitude and doesn't matter you know if you eat a banana in a day as long as you know there's some drinks yeah yeah well i i, I then this one guy joined <laughs> to the band a few years ago yeah yeah but oh, i, I went think... on new energy yeah. <laughs> absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah yeah mm, so enjoyed much about the russian and canadian tours then Jesus, Jesus, and it's it's all about like um <clears throat> different feel. I think it just it just varies a lot as well. Like the first um tour bus we had, like whispered with us as well. So two finished bands. So it's like a kind of like a fun vibe already was in the bus. And the second one we were yeah. um like fully booked in the one bus already with the with everybody also so that was cool too so i think it just just varies from time to time like how it goes and u.s tour in that sense was special in its own because the experience which was weird that you know you get your buyout so you have to go out to eat somewhere so you had more time mm -hmm. to experience so you don't have to just stay in the venue you know 
and um, of course then the because the venues don't have showers so we had more chances of going to our bus driver's <laughs> hotel room that when he used to go to the bus we used to go to his place and take showers there so there was still the vibe of experiencing the city or the areas much more than I, I think the last show last show on the first forest tour we had to take this cold shower in the venue <laughs> that was fun oh no 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 <laughs> The worst was for us, like I still remember me, Temu, and Rolf went in Italy, in Rome. We, had to, we went to a complete strange place with the promoter, promoter left. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, what the fuck is this place? Kind of like a mansion kind of a place. And then like weird showers there. Like if the other person started taking shower, the other one had like cold. So it was like, what? what, what? And then cold a- showers is supposed to be really healthy for you. No. Yeah. Do you remember Blood Scotland? circulation in your heart. And, sorry, what? Do you remember Scotland, Glasgow? That was fucking cold shower. Oh, yeah. I remember. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> well, that was yeah. like, okay, then. Any cold showers, but it, it's worth it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. I've actually tried in my home to take cold showers here and there, but it's fucking annoying. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> great. It wakes you up. Like, yeah. Boom. It's really crazy. Yeah. You feel great afterwards, but... At the moment, it really sucks, mm-hmm. and I haven't been able to go, you know, full cold. Yeah, I, I think this would be really useful on some touring situations for sure. Not minding taking a totally mm-hmm. cold shower. Oh yeah, absolutely. That kind of was my routine as well. If you remember, like in, I don't know, it was Arch and Mace tour, or even already at the first tour as well, I always used to kind of try to take a shower half an hour and an hour before the show. And you guys were like, what, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, well, I need to wake up. <laughs> 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 no. Yeah. Good vibes. All yeah, the tours yeah. have been crazy good. You know? Yeah, definitely. definitely. All the bands. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's do the next question here. Um, um also about traveling beatrice is asking um what were your best travels um not including work travel or what would be the place where you would want to go so well, i would say i really work. enjoyed my trip uh after our last 70k i went to los angeles and then from there me and them went to nam 2020. Yeah, that was great. That was a really enjoyable trip. And still Florida after Nam. That's quick, yeah, well, quick we'll... step on the beach. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 you guys did that. Yeah, true. Yeah, we went to the I beach. think if I were the Florida beach versus Finnish beaches, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. I still have that in the video. I think it's available um, on one of the <clears throat> behind the scenes videos in Patreon. Like, like we were the only like black wearing t-shirts guys on the beach. Me, Yuka, Miro, and then Tupi while we went to the, you know, check out the South yeah, yeah, yeah. Long Beach. <laughs> 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 only people with the black t-shirts on. Like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Right after 70k, so that was that was amazing. I would love to go to Japan and explore that country more because we didn't really no. get to see that much. I mean, yeah, we, saw, we had a pretty hectic schedule. Yeah, but the best was we, we going saw to Tokyo a little bit, but uh, you know, I would love to just go there for a holiday and explore the country more. Mm. It's a really interesting place. Yeah, for interesting sure. Interesting people. Yeah, really interesting planet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like another planet. Also, China was like another planet. Yeah. The sky, skyscrapers. Shanghai, or was it Shanghai? Yes. Shanghai and Beijing. Yeah. Yeah. It was just mind blowing. Right. Like New York has nothing on Shanghai. <laughs> <laughs> well, different, different, different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Keeping yeah. into account like this places that we have gone to as with the band, I think New Zealand would be on the top of my list probably to go as a checking out places because so really here, chill chill vibe out there. Yeah. it was really calm. good 
Wellington. And I had the chance actually to go to the Lord of the Rings museum kind of place. I took the cab and I went there. Mm. And um, then got a little late from the sound check. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you shouldn't have said that. Didn't remember that for now. No, no, you did. You did. And it's like that was the point. So I was like, oh, but it, yeah. New Zealand felt like really like you're at the edge of the flat Earth, like what you say. Oh, God, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, me. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now we go to the. Well, did you, you know the that the Earth? Did you know that the Earth is flat? Oh, next question. Okay. Is, is he, what did he say? The earth is fat. <laughs> fat and flat. Flappity flat. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there will be so many places to go to, definitely. Uh, there are a lot of travel. New Zealand is one of the top five. But I would like to go to all continents as much as possible. Yeah. Like in touring or not touring, so different vibes wherever you go, of course. Seattle, I can go back anytime because what mm. I experienced and I had the time in Seattle or the Washington State. Oh, I mean, I thank everybody who was there who has been helpful for, you know, letting me stay. They know who they are and uh, like absolutely hats off to jeff as well he was kind hats off to jim a couple of other people like who have shown me around the whole place like jim who is basically the original bass player of the band that opened up for us in australia and japan yeah. claim claim the throne he's the original bass player who used to live at that time in seattle so it was pretty nice so i stayed with him throughout basically but like showed around the places and that was crazy went to the bar as well which was supposed to be having the lane staley's like uh, uh exhibition but unfortunately the day that i arrived is the day they ended the exhibition so like yeah. mm. cool. but the northern pacific is really nice for me as well i don't know but beating the north like used to and then but somehow the pacific gives a nice yeah. nice feel Really Somehow felt at home. No Something way. like that. Yes. Yes. Tim, how about you? Well, I, I really haven't like done a ton of holiday traveling. Um, but yeah, meanwhile, Yari was in LA uh, after the 70. Okay, then I went to New York. That was really nice for a few days, staying there, and then, then we did the, the Nam together, and then Florida. So that was a really cool trip. Lately, besides that, um, uh, I've one really memorable experience was driving all the way through Finland, from from all the way in the in the south all the way up to. Lapland and then the, the northmost point of Finland and then crossing to the Norwegian side and, and all the way to the to the Polar Sea. Mm. That, that was really cool when experience. When did you do that? That was, when was it? Uh, must have been 2010-ish, 2009, 2010. Okay. Yeah. That is really nice. I did that. Not, not the same, but more or less similar last year. Okay. Uh, yeah. Especially going from Finland from the farm side northwest yeah. to Norway, really, really beautiful. Really beautiful day. As well. There always some good stuff. Now I remember like when we went to Spain to play for Rock the Coast. That was great as well. Spain is kind of also holy. another country that I would like to explore more. I like warm places. Yeah, and especially maybe, the Rock the Coast maybe, was. You know, more, to see more Florida and Miami. Yeah. I think Hawaii. Rock the Coast was very kind of a holiday vibes because it's kind of like a, the like beach. a tourist, the touristic beach. place at, at, and the yeah. festival was right at the, at the beach. So it was very much like a holiday vibe. The wind was nice. 
flyer we go fly. yeah that was a really strong win <laughs> yeah oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> rock the coast was a great festival rock the coast <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then cool and then came scorpions all right next question <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, that's a uh, perfect bridge uh, again um somebody in facebook asked have you guys actually covered still loving you by the scorpions what, what? really <laughs> yeah. really <laughs> what a question all right what the hell well no we haven't why but we have done another song of course yeah you remember that <laughs> You could remember was the last show on uh, on the 2013 yeah. US, US 2013 tour. US tour. We did a bunch of cool covers of Scorpions, and we did the dirty lyrics version of the uh, "Rock You Like a Hurricane." Oh, <laughs> <laughs> honey! Yeah, we might have. And there was uh, the other bands joined us uh, on the stage. We had, yeah, yeah, the song. Right. So that's one time. Now I'm starting to remember. Really didn't didn't I, I play guitar and then Yari played drums as well? That was in uh, blah, 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 Texas. That, Texas. That was in Texas. Uh -huh. Fort, yeah. Fort Lauderdale. Uh -huh. uh, Fort no, no. Worth, I think. I Fort Worth, sorry. Yeah, that tour was fun because of that. Because we, in every city, we learned a little part of some bands that uh, are originated from that place. Ah, okay, cool. Or somehow connected to the city that we played. Yeah, yeah. that's why you knew uh, Pantera with yeah, the, yeah. playing the guitar. New yeah. York, we played Sinatra. Uh -huh. yeah. That that's a highlight. And in Seattle, of course. Also, with dirty out. lyrics. <laughs> yeah. And Detroit Rock City, and yeah, we we should uh, find that list somewhere. It would be interesting. And Chicago, data. we did the Smashing Pumpkins. Oh yeah. What was it? Rat. <laughs> The rat song. The rat song, right? No, pull up with the butterfly wings. Yeah. <laughs> Which one? We did Kai, lyrics. We did Kai, Kai's lyrics. Was it? Kai, Kai rewrote the lyrics of that yeah. song. Yes, we can agree and blame him for that. Everybody, everybody feels <laughs> bad about it. Right. Still. Oh, yeah, okay. what what what's yeah. the question actually? Um, that, that was the the scorpions. The oh, the scorpions. <laughs> yeah. but let's get back to. There's still uh, one or two more about touring, or shows in general. Uh, Schultz guitar asks or says uh, there's hope for concerts returning in the near future. Besides touring again yourselves, who would you look forward to seeing first? Also, what concerts have you been to that inspired you to be better musicians? I'm looking forward to oh, seeing ooh. Nightwish. Oh, I have to say, me too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that would be interesting to see. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. Looking forward to that. That's for sure. I am definitely looking forward. Yeah. Um, hmm. Well, I would like to see Carpenter, Brute, hmm. Devin Townsend. They win again. It's almost every year. Although how great uh, he is. Aren't they both in Tuska next year? I don't know. I think they are. I've but been looking forward. They to they have been. Carpenter Brut has been in Tuska. Yeah. 2019. We were there. Yeah. We were we there. Were there. <laughs> <laughs> um, then. Uh, I don't know. It would be really interesting to see fucking any show, man, at this time. I mean, like, I'm getting really frustrated. I mean, I the last time I did see a show. Yeah, whatever show. Arya Havakka solo bass concert. I'm all in. Me that? How about Metallica? Seen that once. Same for me. <laughs> <laughs> um seen them twice and thanks to like uh, i have to give the hats off first of all to hannu because hannu knew that that would be my dream come true basically right after the arch enemy tour hannu is our light 
yes. So he surprised me with the ticket in my hand and he was like, let's go. So it was me, Rolf, Hanu, and one other guy. We went to see Metallica and Hardball Arena and that was like, oh my fucking God. Second time, hats off to Miro. Miro took me to see Metallica as well when they played in Hamelena on the outdoors. Yeah. So it was kind of like a festival vibe, which was amazing as well. So, but Metallica two times I've seen. Looking forward to seeing Korn, though. I was very much looking forward to seeing Korn last year already. Korn? Okay. Korn on, in Tuska. But now it's... Um, last year was 2020, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For me, it's really hard to say because I actually just listen to random stuff here and there. Right. Yeah. And I kind of don't even know what this band or what this artist is all about. Uh-huh. Mm. And that's interesting. I haven't really been, you know, following any bands or yeah, just listen stuff here and there, add it to my playlist. Right. So yeah. It's kind of crazy how that, that has changed. Because mm. usually it was always a band. Yeah. Mm. I would still like to see Alice in Chains. Never seen. Oh, yeah. Alice Cooper. Or Alice Cooper. That, that I would love to see. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Not, not he has great song. Like poison? Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> and the whole uh, "Hey, stupid" album. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, like it's great stuff. There's no question. Like, he's yeah. one of the guys that brought three at- theatrics like to the stage properly, even in his own time. So it was crazy good. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see when the hey, game is. Is Key still doing a final show in Finland, or they did that already? Oh, I they were they... here like a couple of years ago. Hopefully, they did. Yeah, I guess they did. <laughs> <laughs> you have you seen them ever live? Unfortunately, no. No. Oh. <laughs> you missed out. Yeah, probably. I missed I out can... a lot. Yeah, I can Many agree things. on the fact that Kiss would pull off or does is capable of pulling off an amazing show. For sure, yeah. And I think that's the only way they can say that they cover their songs. Mm. <laughs> I would love to see Ghost, actually. Oh, that I've seen. That I saw. yeah, we've seen them once in uh, France, was it? Yeah. Uh, Hellfest, we did, did but see we them. watched them really far away. Oh, yeah, in Hellfest, like, yeah, true. I would love to see them in uh, inside the venue. And it was a really cool show back in the days in Helsinki when they just released yeah. the first album that was in FME, in the carpet. Yeah, yeah, I remember, yeah, I remember that as well. I remember that very well because I was hanging around where the ghost was hanging and then they went on the stage and I was like, what the fuck is this? That was the first time I came to know about Ghost. And that was their okay. first show in Finland. Yeah. And then they, uh, right after 10 years, which I had the pleasure of going to seeing them in Hartball Arena when they were headlining and sold out Hartball Arena as well, which was amazing. Oh, wow. And Tribulation okay. was opening for them. So thanks to Tribulation mm-hmm. for getting me on board with that. And but that was pretty nice to see like in 10 years, a band jumping from such a small place where nobody knew and then going on like selling a fucking arena. I think that's, it was a loud show. That's quite a quick growth. Yeah. Yeah. That was like, whoa, that was nice. So that was. They okay. have they have invested a lot in that also the visuals and the image. Yeah. But what's besides the music, of course. Correct. Correct. So they played in 2019, I think. In Hardball Arena. 2019. Yes, probably. Yeah. And then 2009, they played at Finnish Metal Expo, didn't they? Not 2010. That was a long time ago, yeah. Either or, either or. Well, we might be ba- wrong on, on the dates and the years, but maybe do fact check us, please. <laughs> yeah. We are not passing wrong information before we know. Yeah. yeah. What else? I, I saw them in, in the search, oh. but... but uh, was it with you, Asim? No. Also, no. Hmm. Okay, no. But it's kind of all your favorite bands have kind of uh, broken up or 
you know, members change like Skid Row, Sebastian Bach isn't the singer anymore. Like, mm. I would love to see like Seb- uh, Skid Row with original lineup and mm. times change. Yeah. 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 On that note, note, I would love to see Toto. Mm. They have how many lineup changes? Yeah, I think at one point they had like two different lineups or, or something. Like they named a fucking song called Hold the Line. They should have held the line then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, one what artist up? I'm really looking forward to seeing is Jacob Collier. Who's that? Uh, he's like this uh, modern musical genius from, from UK. You have to check out his stuff. Yeah. What was his he, name? Uh, Jacob Collier. Um, he does a lot of stuff on social media, all kinds of music. He's released, f- I think, three or four solo albums. Is kind it of instrumental albums. or is it, uh, singing? No, no, he's. I think singer. he's a multi instrumentalist. He plays like all the instruments and, and does a lot of singing. He does like a lot of these layered vocal things. Um, yeah, a lot of really amazing stuff and, and also like. Um, yeah, he's got like perfect pitch and perfect like rhythmic ear. He can tell like oh, that's cool. fre- frequencies, you know, like uh, uh, you know, just just from hearing and like BPM number from hearing. He's like totally okay. pl- he's blown never- away, like watching stuff from him. But he sh- gotta check him out. But he shits music out, like literally, on daily basis. It's so much of music that he is out there. Like it's so hard to like pinpoint. Like what the hell? So he's sort of like David Townsend. Actually, well, uh, you know, a way different level. Yeah, it's it's more like you know if if you think that if somebody can be fluent in music, he's like totally fluent in music. Like there's nothing that he couldn't do musically. Yeah, how old is he? He's uh, eighteen or nineteen. Something like no, that. no, no. Yeah, older. No, what? I think he's eighteen or then he's early twenties. Like crazy, max. crazy yeah. talent. Why is a yeah. fan of him as well? Steve Vai, that is. And mm. he already has won Grammy. He has done a, a kind of like an arrangement with Chris Martin of Coldplay. And okay, you're right. As in 26. Uh, yes. Exactly. 18 and 19 when he kind of came out. Yes. Yeah, that was probably uh, when he, he already put out the first he's, stuff. He's too good already. Yeah. Exactly. Pretty nice, pretty nice. He does, but sometimes it's too much. I mean, like too much. Like, what is this? What What is the song like? It's everywhere. Is it, uh, is it uh, Gent, Sandra? No, he doesn't really do much metal, but all kinds of world music and and kind of like really complex oh, harmonies okay. and you know, um, microtonal stuff and you know, things like that. But is the music good? some of it it's, yeah. it's interesting it's it's like some of it yeah, is definitely it going well i think there's a lot of people who enjoy it yeah. he's become really popular so if, if that's the meter then i'd say it's good it to me it's good. it's just uh breathtaking like breathla- breathtakingly interesting like just but you're, you're not going like i really love this like yeah there's definitely moments like that for sure and that's why i'd love to see the live in concert because i think he like improvises most of it and like really connects with the audience that's one of his things as well yeah for me there's music that i'm really impressed about and really interested about but then there's music that really gets me going like hell yeah so there's different kinds of music that you listen to in different moods yeah for sure I'll check him out. Yep. Interesting. A couple other shows right, that I was really... right away. Yeah, yeah, I do that. Mm-hmm. A couple other shows that I was really looking forward to before the lockdown hit was Arch Enemy was coming here in Zurich. Parafree had a show scheduled nearby and Dimo Borgir. So those those three I'm really looking forward to seeing when they reschedule. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, would be okay. nice just to go to sh- to any show just because yeah, yeah. for the show why yeah. after such a long break yeah give us anything we'll take it 
Yeah. Any more questions? Yep. Um, there's one for Yari in particular. Rania asks, um, is there a chance for a song sung in Finnish on the new album? Actually, no. Not at this time. I've written probably 75, maybe even 80 percent of the lyrics already. And for sure, well, can never be 100 percent sure, but I'm pretty sure it's only going to be English. So there's 20 percent chance of Finnish. <laughs> you could say that. <laughs> so, so you're telling me there is a chance. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I'm pretty set. It's gonna be just English. Let the guy. And I'm actually really, really happy about these new new lyrics. I'm like really being like, I don't know, hitting a gold mine, so to speak, with the whole concept of the album. Like, a, I almost like have a movie movie plot for the whole album. Ah, so that's where the two hundred million dollar budget is going to go. <laughs> <laughs> Please refer reference number uh what is that segment number 1 please refer to podcast number 10 where we have talked about 200 <laughs> budget <laughs> uh okay then another question for everybody this is from Arakia um on Patreon um what is your favorite song from Winter Sun to listen to and why? Uh, which one is the most rewarding slash satisfying to play live and why? And finally, which one took you the longest to learn slash compose? So favorite song to listen to, Ooh. to play live. And then uh, which one was the hardest to learn and compose? Favorite song to listen to is When Time Fades Away. Uh, what was the uh, favorite song to play? Let's see. Mm -hmm. Well, nowadays it's just to sing. I've enjoyed Slumber quite a bit. It was our opening track during these last tours we did. It was always good vibe to sing that song. Yeah, very energetic. Mm. Yeah. What was the and, third one? And which one took you the longest to learn slash compose? Mm, longest to compose. Probably. Probably sons. Because there was so, so much orchestrations, like extra melodies and extra melody lines to compose. I would say the bread and butter, the guitar riffs, the arrangement didn't took that long, like as all the other songs. But doing all the orchestrations, that that took like crazy amount of effort. Uh -huh. so yeah, that song de definitely, and it's probably one of the hardest songs to sing, not not because of. Uh, technical wise but because it's so takes so much stamina to perform it's a long song and there's a lot of singing all the time and especially a lot of uh, like uh, higher range uh, clean raspy singing and when you're doing crawling vocals those uh, clean vocals al always take a hit during live so that's probably the most difficult also. Also Star Child maybe. Yeah. Songs that have a lot of vocals on them. They are the hardest to sing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <All right. laughs> uh, favorite song to listen, favorite song to play and are the hardest to learn. 
favorite to play is time because time is definitely the one that you go out with a shebang. It's the last one and you put all your, you know, energy into it. Mm. Um, yeah, I was going to say for me as well. I wanted to say it as well, but I guess I can. <laughs> now you have to say something else. <laughs> Sons is fun to play as well. Uh, there's no question about it. There are so many different um, sections in there. And of course, you know, because me and me and Yuka go away from the state, so we have our <laughs> our time basically. What's happening behind the curtains? <laughs> so yeah, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. We don't need to. And Asim never forgets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. You just don't remember. <laughs> um. Learning wise, <laughs> learning wise, what could it be? Battle. Uh, to play it really tight. Yeah, to play it tight, but learning wise, learning wise, like what took the longest time to learn a song. Uh, I would almost say like for sadness and hate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you take literally because we didn't play it in the beginning, so it kind of yeah, took exactly. the learners to longest, the longest, longest to, learn. to get to. It's to actually learn, to learn. it's actually quite a difficult song. It is. There's, there's some stupid changes happening. <laughs> yeah, like tempo Always changes, like slight tempo stupid. changes. Yeah. yeah, it's either yeah. me, either Temu, either Yuka, either like whoever is playing the drum. Somehow, something has to get fucked up in the most easiest kind of <laughs> song. Think about it. You know? yeah. It sounds like an easy song, but it's not. <laughs> yeah. I think Sadness had been the troublesome song for me. I would not like to play that. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, shall we promise that we won't ever play that song again? Right here, right now. <laughs> No. Shall we? <laughs> Shall we? No, we should we should Pink play. Is where? <laughs> we should play. Yeah. Okay, maybe next twenty years. After twenty years. <clears throat> what? <laughs> okay. We'll see. Uh I know Temu's hardest song to learn, I think. I don't know any of mine. <laughs> <laughs> You don't, um, you don't need practice. I, I was oh, yeah, that, that was my point. <laughs> of course, yeah, that's the thing. I was going to say that as a band, there was a couple things that we had to work on at, at, at the rehearsals. Usually we don't really like spend much time like reviewing that much stuff. Everybody learns their oh, parts. It's always the fucking Star Child Meshuga part. Uh, yeah, exactly. Star Child Meshuga part. And yeah, then also... Well, and forest that weeps. The forest that weeps. Oh, yeah. The yeah. Part. The, Maybe that's yeah, the thing that... The party, as party a band, part. And, Took the longest to learn, in a way. Yeah, I, I'd that's say a, that. That's like a tricky to, thing to remember. As a band, to get it that right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's a very logical uh, thing to the broad part. Of course. But, but in the end, you don't really learn it that way. You just remember and feel it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a very logical thing, but all the thing, it's just all the time different. But still, it's very logical. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Fine. Yeah, but, Play it with your emotion. Yeah. You feel it. I would say for us that weeps for me as well when it comes to song to learn because of that. What we just discussed. Favorite song to listen is probably no. How can you put one over the other? Actually it could be for us that weeps. All right. Also. Forest of Weaves and Sadness and Hate, the easiest songs to play are the most <laughs> difficult songs to play. <laughs> what is the not nice song to play? I cannot say time, so... <laughs> oh, you can say it. No, no. No, 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 no. no. you got to say something else now. No. There was also what is the favorite song to listen to. Oh, yeah, listen to. I said listen to Forest of Weaves. Oh, yeah. And I could add also the most difficult is loneliness because you ne really need like a stamina and energy to, to sing that 
chorus that goes quite high. And when you're doing whole night crawling vocals, mm -hmm. it lowers your kind of vocal range. So then it's really difficult to do that, those high, high clean vocals. Mm -hmm. So in stu studio just... circum circumstances, it's much more easier. But it's not just that, it's the fact that the notations are to be held and, you know, yeah. on longer. Yeah. In any case that happens, that, you know, is the worst and the difficult part to do. And in, in yeah. my case as well, with Damnation, Maze of Despair is definitely one of my hardest songs to sing because it's the slowest and yet it keeps the same notes for a longer period of time. Yeah. That's where it's you... It's really <sighs> strange, it wears your throat down. Okay. Yeah. For, for me, crawling vocals are really easy. Mm, mm. They just come naturally and easy. But then they destroy the clean vocals. Clean vocals would take a hit. Mm. Which part does the bass player get the hit of? <laughs> <laughs> what, what? Where? What? Like where? Uh, where was did, I? Did you answer the... Your favorite to listen to. Favorite to listen. No, I didn't. You did. Forest that weeps. Oh yeah, I said it. No, the favorite one to play. Play, yeah. That could also be forest. Oh. <laughs> forest that's where. <laughs> what is it about that song? Huh? What is it about that song? There's so much emotion there and boogie times when it comes to the party prop part and and then we have the choirs you, you and get the atmosphere some... choirs and. And you get to do some low crawlings. Yeah, and then playing wise, it's like a little bit of higher, but of course a lot of low notes with the bass as well. So there's a lot of rumble there to cool the play. But the, oh, right. the best part is always when it's like the slumber part, when it's the beginning, me and Dave. Slumber party. Like when we are playing the whole first section of the riff, and mm. then you guys looking at like, and you just end with somebody has to do do the root note well. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Alrighty. Demo, my guess would have been the hardest for you to learn would have been the new song because of the solo. Yeah. Yeah, probably. I mean, the hardest one is always the one that you've played the least. I don't mm -hmm. think it's like time wise it well yeah yeah it did take plenty of time to to kind of uh, get it up to speed um I'd say like initially though maybe like the songs where there's like most variations and no uh, riffs are not I, there's always some little twist I think battle against time uh, guitar riff wise there's always like something is changing and while the most of the riffs are kind of similar there's still like one or two notes that are different so if you try to kind of nail it exactly then that that's kind of hard and there are always some little things that no one will ever hear live yeah exactly but they're on the yeah. album so you have to play them. Yeah. <laughs> i think for the drummers all of them could agree that battle might be a drummer's favorite because of their really really long consistent Oh, yeah. the beginning of sun yeah yeah that's the or su sons or battle yeah yeah that's both true. but the drummers have nailed them pretty well mm -hmm. yeah. yeah eternal darkness we haven't talked about it it has been one of it used to be one of my favorite songs in that sense to even that play. was it's actually quite song. difficult yeah that's the song that we haven't played the most if we think about it well yeah. we have played it more than sadness and hate that is true a little bit more yeah but yeah, but yeah that was difficult Picking hand wise, also that was like a big stamina thing. No. Yeah. But picking hand wise, new song is a bitch. Mm, yeah. Kind of. True. Yeah. So marathon. Yeah, it's a marathon. Yeah. Marathon shredding. Yeah. It should be. Yeah, we should be put in that genre for the you know instrumentalists. Marathon metal. That's our <laughs> genre. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, um, I can admit my defeat when it comes to talking here with three guitar players. The amount of notes. Yeah, you so just bass player eight. like you just pick eight eight notes, <laughs> 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 or other pick sixteen. God damn, sometimes sixteen as well. Your secret has been revealed. God, yeah, yeah. 
likewise you guys go to 32s and 64s <laughs> i mean if if you're feeling a bit off we can exchange yuka no problem oh, 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 yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. take 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 it or leave it <laughs> <laughs> yeah funny yeah but then yeah uh yeah what did you say most time, difficult time is probably the, the coolest one to play i mean there's other really cool songs too but like especially the time intro that's super powerful and energetic and because it's usually the last song of the set then you can put like all your last energies into that so that's that's a great song to play live star gel as well sons as well others all the songs are fun to play live um and to listen to as well it's hard to pick one because usually if i sit down to listen to winters and stuff then it's i usually go through the whole album so it's more like the whole piece of music but maybe like um one thing that maybe would not be that obvious i really enjoy beautiful death to listen to that, that's a really great vibe that is great as well yeah. i i love it yeah that was when we did when we were able to play that like you know when it came to the set list it was fun to play it was definitely the black fun. sheep of the first album it was great always been yeah it is it has immense power bulldozing atmosphere that's yeah. you know yep yeah. That Even like true. when when I heard the Winter Sun for the first time as well, I think Beautiful Death was something that struck me the most. Mm. Fuck yeah! Even the slow like you know chugs as well. Ja 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 ja. Ah! <laughs> weird. That that song was kind of actually kind of extempore song. Like uh, I still needed one one song for the first yeah. album before i went to the studio mm. and i just came up with, came up with it like out of nowhere the whole thing pretty much okay That's all the cool. other songs were like fully fully ready yeah i was like i, I still need one one goodie here mm. and then it just came <laughs> Maybe nice. it's a sign. Intuition. Sign of the times. Intuition. Mm. Yeah. Intonation. What? Well, I have to say that I need to still change the favorite song to listen to. So for <laughs> forest to slumber. This is never really? gonna end. Yeah, this is never gonna end. Oh wow. I will still change my mind a few times more. <laughs> Maybe. Exactly. It's a freaking uplifting song, you know. Although you dwell in the slumber in the beginning, but still. Yeah, I like the change in the middle. Mm. It becomes more energetic. Yeah. But do we yeah. still have questions? Yeah, yeah, we still have a few to go. Uh, this you one's... already answer to all of them? I think. I should, I, should I still change my mind a few times? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or do you change your pants? <laughs> <laughs> No. Okay. So this is from Bambi Mouse uh, one to Yukka. Um, she says, "I'm a great Norther fan. I would like to know more about the movie uh, V2, Death Angel. Um, yeah. You guys had a part participation in uh, about the Frozen Angel video based on the on the movie and how everything happens. Tell us how the experience was for you." And do you still have contact with Christian Randa? You yes. guys, a movie star too. Oh yeah, that part as well. Man of many talents. There we go. Th thank you, dear colleague. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so tell us about it. It's a detective movie. Obviously, there's a murder case. Uh, you can check from Indian movie database way more quickly about it. Um, very successful 
detective series in Finland used to be at least, I still it is. Uh, Nodar just had a lucky time to participate in that. I do not remember the background story to it, but the band was asked to join there through the, uh, the management at the time. And then just make one of the songs for the movie. There was also besides Kotipelto, Timo Kotipelto made some songs as well, and a few other artists as well. But uh, I guess they need some rascal, rascal punch to join to the actual scene because one of the actors was kind of like playing a dark heavy metal guy there, and we were kind of his, his, uh, her. How old were there. you at the time? Oh, good question. Was 20s. 2003, 2006? Yeah, something like that. I have the amazing, like, my dear colleague here, Yari, mentioned that I'm a movie star. Yes, I have actually, probably a million Actually, me, me and them are movie stars too. We don't talk about that. We talk about my <laughs> time now. <laughs> no, but yeah, yeah, in a, in a bit, but I had a... Not a... Oh, this is the best times ever. Probably four seconds in the movie where I spit the main actor on the face. <laughs> that was that was my time. Nice. That was my moment. Fuck. <laughs> and okay. Was it your own spit or was it water or what? No, it was my spit. Oh, sure. They didn't tell me to Holy spit crap. on the legs, but I actually spit literally on the face. I went totally in. These days, you, they, these days you couldn't do that. Yeah. That would be quite quite this and that. But yeah, that's about it. And yes, I'm in still contact with Christian Kanta. He's also my most clear. So can we now talk about me and Temu? Yes, please. <laughs> dear, <laughs> dear colleague. But Temu, I haven't still, dear, still dear, seen dear the colleagues. I haven't still seen the movie that we were. You in. haven't? Okay. No. Yeah, we have to but, also it. make some uh, sauna evening and watch like Heavy Saurus movie. Heavy Saurus movie. Okay. When yeah. was that? It must have been. 2014 or something. Yeah, probably around. What were you doing there? Um, We, we were. were some, some, uh, okay, this is some demolition stuff, workers. Yeah. Or yeah, like construction workers. We, we were blowing up this mountain or something. Uh, yeah, well, it was, evil witch. yeah, the mountain of Wasari. No, not that one. In, oh, it, oh, it was yeah, not another it was mountain in, in Wasari. Ah. It was in fact oh, in, yeah, the other in one. Wasari. Yeah, the other one. <laughs> uh, and also Kotipeldo was involved in this one too. He was part yes. of the construction crew as well. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it was three. the three of us. Aren't there things that I'm getting to know about my own band members even till today? Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the hell? Well, let's let's keep it to this. No, no that's not only fans, only fans. Please, please. No. I have to see it someday. Yeah, I, I think Before I went to I see die. the. I went to see the premiere <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, I think you, I saw think? it also at Sonic Pump. Yeah, I went to see the premiere and and I think I also saw the. Yeah, yeah, because I, I also like recorded some guitars on the on the clips, not on that specific one where we are, but yeah. So I, I okay. saw like parts of the movie at Sonic Pump. So how many seconds did we have in the movie? Uh, okay, here it comes. Probably, more, good... probably more than you got. <laughs> probably a good five <laughs> seconds or so. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, oh. that's quite some time. But but yeah. I think we had also like lines. Uh, oh, wow. We, that... we, sh we shouted did something. We? I, I think oh, wow. so. Like, oh. like get out of there or something. Like, but that's more than Yuka. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. More notes than Yuka. More Yuka notes has still more a movie than Yuka. More. Yuka has still quite a special part. The spitter. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> the spitter. Yeah. Beat that. Uh -huh. yes, the spit that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Hmm. I should check the clip where you guys are. Is it like many, any movie times. So, Jukka, yes. <laughs> you're not a swallower. 
<laughs> this, Next question, I'm telling, please. I'm telling you, that was not non-alcoholic beer. <laughs> I swear it's oh, not. I, I'm telling you, it was, but something else is wrong in that. <laughs> that there under my box there, Me. or wherever it is. Yeah. <laughs> Under the boxers, but the silence and the faces. I'll <laughs> see many movie time. <laughs> Me movie time? I don't think so. Not that I know. I don't know. Could be only okay. only fans movies. Yeah, yeah, only those kinds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Let's take uh, a quick one from Edish yeah, One Hundred. Uh, a question for everybody. What do you think of Polyphia band and their music? I've heard a couple of songs, really cool stuff. I think the one song was the, there was a video they were playing a church or something, right? Yeah. yeah that was really cool. Sorry, I think I've heard some band? other songs. Polyphia. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar. But I'm not okay. that, that into that style it's it's like what i've said earlier earlier it's sometimes fun to listen to music that is impressive and interesting but, but it it's not like the music that goes, gets me what going what kind of music is it technical guitar based progressive yeah, yeah. notes here instrumental and there. Yeah. instrumental they they do a lot of like uh kind of like heavier riffs but also like a lot with clean sound stuff and I think the guys compose a lot with like keyboards and like uh, exactly. then actually then like Put arrange it on, it on the guitar. So it's like kind of like not very traditional guitar type of stuff. So I think pretty, pretty uh, uh, new kind of thing. So it's, yeah. I, I think it's cool. It's like I think they have really a uh, great like, bass player as well. So worth, worth checking out. It's like pressing that key which is in the scale and then pressing this one here and then going, let's try it on the guitar. Mm -hmm. okay. That was, I was thinking from piano to guitar, like. It's like the same way. I hate the people who write fucking melodies when they write melodies, especially for the singing on a keyboard. And then that tell the vocalist to, Hey, hold this off. What? Yeah, I've, I've actually lately, it doesn't work. <laughs> I've tried weird. to write like melody singing melody lines with guitar or just writing with keyboard then when i try to sing them mm -hmm. this doesn't work at all <laughs> then i really Wait. radically need to change the and i like to, just, vocals, I like to just like improvise first like what comes out of me mm -hmm. and then i start to mold that right. yeah i mean definitely backing vocals when i do when i make of course i need to get the reference and so on then i go like ah okay i could do this or do that because you're so used to like, you know, writing um, in a scale form something, then it becomes easier for you to recognize this thing and that thing. I have nothing against Polyphia. I mean, they're great musicians, by the way. I mean, Tim Hansen has a beautiful Ibanez signature guitar. There's no question about it. Um, they were the ones that promoted the AZ series the most, I believe. And uh, they have been very good musicians, but just sometimes the music just throws off. It's the same way. The technical musicianship is amazing. Amazing to be like, you know, super technical and all that kind of stuff. But when you don't have that and you can't relate to it and have a connection with it, then anything would throw you off, basically. There are a lot of great yodeling singers as well. And people listen to a lot of yodeling music, but I can't. So that doesn't mean that it's bad music. It's just doesn't. What do you mean you can't? I can't. <laughs> I just can't listen to. So when you hear yodeling, you're just. I just can't. <laughs> like, yeah. Wouldn't pay to listen to that. <laughs> yeah. But can you yodel? Yeah. Show me. <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> Let's do a yodel <laughs> video tomorrow. <laughs> yodel. <-a> <laughs> <laughs> yes, please do it tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. So if you... <laughs> only fans. Only fans. <laughs> Okay. No. What uh, was the question? Uh, about policy. <laughs> <laughs> this is like your this is absolute joke. Talking about yodel, yodel. Oh my god! 
This is absolute George Bush moment. Like, <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> okay. okay, I have a, this is quite cool, uh, really compressed, clean guitar sound. Yeah, correct. Yeah, and then very kind of complex riffs. I've I've uh, worked out a couple bits with with students, and and you you literally have to like work it out like note note by note. Mm -hmm. These youngsters these days, crazy. Co complex people. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's cool. Talking something, about complex new. music, huh? Uh, <clears throat> sorry. Talking about complex music, huh? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Mm. <laughs> and Yari, we we saw actually them live in uh, at Nam, at one of the after parties where uh, they were. What? The Steve Vai set where where all the big names stepped out to play the solos of one of the songs. They were there oh, as well. Oh yeah, now I remember. Special yeah. appearance. Yeah. Also Joe Satriani was there. Yeah. It was epic. Nice, nice, nice. nice. Yeah. That Steve Vai so really blew us away. He's a world class performer, there's no no doubt about it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. One of the, if you want to enjoy great facial expressions in a guitar player, on a guitar player, there's nothing that gets better than Steve Vai. Yeah. Uh, it's well, just body Chris, language. Chris Impelitteri is pretty close. Who? Chris Impelitteri. Okay. Oh, really? I, I've never seen him live. His instructional video is epic. But do you mean just like facial expressions or or also? I like... make some jokes about it. Okay, <laughs> I don't know. Pretty funny. Okay, let, let's uh, move on. Still, a couple more couple more questions. Um, Ape Kortelai asks: Have you learned something new from yourself during the pandemic, or has the pandemic changed uh, uh, the how you see the world versus? Uh, before this whole situation started. Yes, learned a lot of new things about myself. There's probably many of us who have had a lot of time to think of things. The other thing when it comes to the pandemic, I think it's just been, I can say that in English, been proving a lot about humanity that I was thinking about before as well. In, in good and bad. I have to say, <laughs> how diplomatic can you be? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I've learned lots, but can't really pinpoint any specific things. Just maybe patience and you know tolerance for like uh, like just having having to be be alone and you know. Not being able to go anywhere, so I'm gonna have to be more strong mentally. Mm. Well, okay. In, in, in that department, I mean, there are shit tons. I mean, I have changed my life pattern throughout. It just, you know, it's a, it's definitely one eighty flip, in that sense. Um, got myself out of a lot of comfort zones that I wanted to break. So bro broke a lot of patterns, learned a lot, still learning a lot, uh, got myself into a lot of different learning, um, educational, uh, not institutes or something. I hate institutional education anyways. Um, but a lot of educational material that I've come across expanded my knowledge learned a lot about like um, <clears throat> to just how to proceed even in the shittiest times that is possible. So a lot of inner learning and figured out a lot of, you know, just worked on myself a lot. And then else than that, um, just doing all the things which make you just doing the things which are completely away from your comfort zone. So 
started the Twitch channel, streamed a lot, still stream a lot, started doing things on Twitch as well, which I never thought that I would be able to do or I feared of doing. So, you know, conquering my fear from every step, that's been the uh, challenge as well. And then just, yeah, as, as Yuka said, like diplomatically in that sense, lovely things to get to know about humanity and uh, both ways. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah, I think the, uh, of course, the situation is non-optimal uh, pretty much for everybody, but, but I think like taking a positive attitude, I guess the importance of positive attitude in general has become even more valuable uh, in a way. And uh, I guess a certain kind of like uh, um, feeling that the whole world is kind of in it together. Uh, it, it has been definitely a, a new feel that I don't think anybody else has had this way, you know, before, at least in our lifetime. So, um, yeah, I think that's been really interesting and also something that can, you know, I think be beneficial in the long run to kind of people trying to figure out ways seriously how to work out things together. Um, personally, um, um, like lately, I've been more kind of focusing on the the teaching side of, of guitar so I've been also like looking much more into like uh, like uh, psychology and like uh, like just how to be a better teacher like that way uh, self-learning um, how to how to represent things to my students in, in a better way and, and also just like getting better myself and that way being able to turn over the information to other people but that's like a continuous thing but now especially having been uh, having been concentrating so much just on teaching lately it's it's been like amplified in, in a way um other than that just lately uh, i started uh focusing a little bit more on learning german again um there's this uh, app called duolingo you might have heard of as in um, which I think is cool. Uh, you've got like these um, very short lessons, like one lesson takes up to maybe five minutes, but usually even less per lesson. So you can, you know, you can find time to do one lesson per day or a couple lessons per day. And I think it's very well built and there's like a point system that, you know, encourages you to, it's more of a game really, but at the same time you're learning new vocabulary and it also has like a, um, speech recognition, so you know it gives feedback on your pronunciation and there's uh, something in German. Oh, I'm not gonna come out now as a, as a German speaker yet, but, but you have a three German speakers in the band soon. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I did study German in school for, for multiple years, but I never really got to use it. And now living in Switzerland, it's it's of course more used for for using it, but it's it's easy to fall back to to English because it's just still so much more easier to you know find the the kind of like casual conversation stuff. But yeah, I'm I'm uh, pushing it a little bit a little bit more on on the German side. Interesting. I would say uh, also try to have a more positive attitude, but also this pandemic has really waken me up like uh, to be more healthy and really focus on my diet and try to exercise. And so if you catch the disease, then it's easier to fight it off. Well, I've always been like, well, I'm not in the best, I'm not the most fit guy out there, but uh, I always try to pay attention to what I eat. I actually quit sugar altogether like a year ago. I haven't had any sugar except uh, Christmas. I had a little ice cream and chocolate. 
but yeah that's also sugar something based product or the perception of the sugar that we have because alcohol has sugar yeah i mean it's impossible to quit sugar all altogether because pretty much everything you find in grocery store has a little bit at least a little bit of sugar mm -hmm. and of course alcohol i haven't I had actually alcohol since the new year so oh, wow. except the oh, few ones you just i had, had on, in this podcast you just, you just had it <laughs> <laughs> no yeah, I'd like 0 0.5 <laughs> Oh, it does have alcohol. Yeah. yeah, what the hell? They're lying. It says non-alcoholic, alcohol-free, and it has 0 0.5 alcohol. It's a lie. It's like sugar-free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do we learn today, yeah. kids? <laughs> They're lying to you. Yeah, well, whatever is happening, always go onwards. Yeah. Always. yeah. And please, myself, I try to adapt as good as I can and reflect. Well, that's what you must do. We adapt and we go forward. Mm. We have to. Yeah. On that note, kind of preach to this one from Natania. Uh, is there any part of your personality that you feel you need to improve? If so, which part and why? Not getting pissed off at humanity that much. No, that's just one part of it. There are many things. <laughs> yeah, something like that. And yeah. yeah, I would say also like, like quick temper and be more like a chill and stone, stone like. Stoned. <laughs> yeah, Stoned. maybe I need some, you know, <laughs> green stuff <laughs> to be more chill. And you know, less emotional, but you know, also, I write the music that I write because I'm kind of emotional being. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I need to be more man and more manly, <laughs> less emotional. <laughs> okay. Whatever. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. Why is that again? Sorry, what? Why? Why less emotion? Or do you mean because, like not get provoked? Or yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. Oh, yeah. Like okay. I said, so, I have a quick temper and uh, have yeah, yeah. So, so more like not taking it personally, but still, you know, having yeah, emotion. yeah, exactly, exactly. Still taking it personally, but not. <laughs> <laughs> and I've yeah. gotten a lot, a lot better at it. Mm. But there's like everything. There's always work to be done. Mm. I don't know, like. Of course, there's all the time to learn new things. Try to keep up with the changes because everything is changing all the time. Yeah. You have to kind of like, um, there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot. It's like um, self recognition is one of the other things. Accept yourself, you know, forgive yourself, um, admit to the mistakes. Um, shake hands with your own self, basically, you know, be friends with yourself. It's so much easier to say, so much easier to joke around about, like, oh, I'm friends with myself. But if you dig deep inside, we really aren't friends with ourselves, basically. Yeah. Yes, we completely we are different than what we think we are. So we are not in acquaintance with our own self that much m most of the time. So oh, we I, 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 I understand what you're saying, but I guess it's yeah, you have to be able to you love yourself. yourself. You have to be able to love yourself in order to love others. No, not not just that being the target, but like it's um, the aspect of to get to. Yeah, exactly. But Yuka said just to, to be to, able to live, to know yourself better, and to come in acquaintance with it. That ah, okay. Well, just like if you have some other person that you know in life, you get to know that person, and you understand where that person is coming from. So instead, apply the same routine on yourself. This is what most of us don't do. Most of us, I mean, with the humanity perspective. Um, um, the, that and it's a le learning curve for every everyone. Everyone exactly. has a different Exactly. Of course. Situation. Everybody has a different uh, intake power or like, you know, all these kind of things. But yeah. the question was about like what I would change about my personality. Um, in that sense, it would be more like, 
to focus on the things in order to make them progressive and better and not give a damn about the negative attitude of anything around and not let that get affected because i see the negative effect like like the i get affected more easily by the negative attitude of sur my surroundings much faster much faster than any positive attitude because there are many people who get like a small positive thing happened and everybody burst out like yes in my case it's like if a negative ha thing happens i get more provoked by it so provocation in that sense for sure mm. would be nice to change and and um delivery of doing things and so on, making things possibly work out faster and to make myself a better person. I think the whole social media thing has been a learning curve for humanity as a whole. We're still going along and, and uh, you know, there's shitty comments flying around for every, every direction to everyone. Oh yeah, it's a war zone basically. Yeah. It's just, it's just insane. It just shows, like, of course, it's not been about, like, more than, not even 20 years yet that we got the access of the social media the way that we have. So it's just like, you know, what the hell? Don't even know the other person, and then you go on judging the other person just like that, out of the fucking one comment or a video or the cancel culture. What the fuck? I mean, yeah. it's like, well, what do you know? What yeah. do you know? Have you met the person? No. But he said that. Oh, well, then what the fuck? What did you say? Repeat yourself what you said in your life, which is not on social media. Ever thought about that? No. So, yeah, those kind of things. And I get very easily agitated. Like the way just I got agitated right now as well. Like, yeah, this is time to learn. <laughs> exactly. so, those kind of things. I get agitated. And of course, being, being live streaming all the time, that was... Like, no, you catch yourself. Yeah, exactly. And that's the way we learn. So it's like... Um, but those are the things that I think we all should really get focused on and more learn about. Be sympathetic, empathetic, do understand where the other person is coming from and kind of like bring us back on track, each other. And all we can do is try. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I wish it would be like... I mean, these days, the way I think if, if someone goes to some bands or any, anyone's, you know, social media site and trashes them, I mean, what what does that tell tell you about that person who does that? Of course, they probably have some Not issues true. on their own. For true, exactly, exactly. And um, it's you... it's a way for them to vent. True. But unfortunately, unfortunately, that went is something that is kind of like a mark on the board that remains forever, unless and until you yeah. erase it. And even if you erase it, after 10 years, a fucking company would come after you and say, well, you said that. We can't have it. But it's it. like, it's, it's not the most, it's, it's, it's the, it's another good way to win. It doesn't add any, like, value or positivity. It only adds negativity to the world. Shut, let's shut down social media. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> oh, what about this yeah. podcast then? <laughs> <laughs> Just one, one thing that connects. This is entertainment. One <laughs> one important thing that connects people really is the dimension that is missing in social media is the face to face and actually interaction. Actually, yeah, but I think board, feeling, board, feeling the vibration make of your mother being I think, next to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, podcast is a really good way for people to learn. It's a discussion about many things and. We can all yeah. learn about these, these discussions. Well, I mean, the unfortunate thing is that our attention span has become so less that we don't really sit down to listen to things for about an, even an hour. I mean, we don't even sit down to fucking read an article. We just read the headline and we, meaning we as the human race in majority, we just read the headline and make an assumption already and move on to the day. And by the time three people have read it, there are three different kind of fucking stories that they have in their mind. Yeah, and, and sometimes the headlines are wrong, and then months later they do stealth edits. Of course, I mean, but that that's the thing. Nobody really puts down their head into something, and you know, it's like you can't listen to a chorus 
of a song and judge the whole song and be like, well, that's a shit song. No, I mean, like, listen to the whole song. Or you can't learn the song as well by just like, oh, it's in the E minor key and these are the notes. How do you learn that? You can't. You simply can't. So you need to uh, implement those kind of things. And those are the interesting things that I had to change in my character in this pandemic time and, you know, make the best use out of our time. Many people are just sleeping their day away, which is great. Maybe they have been working for 10 years and they didn't have time to really sit down and take a breather, which is amazing for them. Uh, but some people who have been sleeping for 10 years, maybe it's time to fucking wake up. But no. <laughs> how, how can you say it to someone else? That's yeah. The, that's the hard part. Exactly. It's the self-realization. It's just, you know, you would only understand by getting hit by a bus well, those are those kind of people if you tell them that hey you're gonna get a hit by a bus so come on look left and right they'll only learn when they'll really get hit by a bus straight in their fucking face <laughs> a lot of it is age i mean the more, more older you get the more wiser you become mm-mm, mm-mm. no well not in every case of course no no not just no, getting more sleep. numbers it might be that you're just you don't do anything, you don't know anything. Maybe you do. Yeah, I like mean, in most say. of the cases, the more older you get, the more fucking stubborn you get because you think you know it all. That is true Basically, also. You have spent like 40 years of your time. Who the fuck are you to tell me? And it's like, that is true what? also. Yeah, I mean. You can get bitter and stubborn and, you know, hate, it's hate nice to watch. It's nice to watch us and getting, getting to the hospital. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Asim, don't get triggered. <laughs> hey. Well, yeah. Hey. Yeah. So there are this, a lot of interesting things that this would be. Yeah, we we could have a like a, a podcast of its own. Podcast for the next decades to come from this time. Yeah. yeah then Yuka will be sixty, and then. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yuka, where do you see yourself in ten years? In sixty years. Um. <laughs> In 10 years. When, when you're 60. Yeah, yeah. yeah, when you're 60. Right. In 10 years. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Stop, stubborn and... He's just checking out his bone structure. Like, mm, okay, yeah. Stubborn and angry and above everyone else. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What does what Temu say about? What was the question even? Yeah, Temu, what do you say <laughs> We die when you again. see me in 10 years being 60? <laughs> <laughs> there should be an edit out of all the podcasts of Yari. What was the question? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> the original do you question remember? was... Yes, I do. God damn it. Yeah, okay. It was about the the personality and if there was something you wanted to improve. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, definitely also like interaction with other people and understanding, compassion. I think it, it's not necessarily the age, but it's definitely like your experiences. Like the the more stuff you see, the, if you, if you take it in a certain way, I think then you learn to understand other people better. So. And the more different kinds of situations you meet in your life and, you know, the places you go and different cultures and all that. I think that's something I I, I try to get better all the time, like trying to see the world from somebody else's, you know, perspective as well. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, yeah, remembering that everybody, you know, has their, um, you know, same... Um, you know, everybody's still the same, and ha- everybody has the same, same problems and the same, you know, mm. same thoughts and same feelings, more or less. Like, um, but maybe on on um, a different thing, like maybe learning to get, learning to be, and become a little bit more decisive in a way, taking you know decision and you know going at it and not you know like not thinking about things necessarily too much um in certain things like um yeah kind of like goes with the like aiming for perfection type of thing as well like 
like uh, sometimes I catch myself doing that like spending just too much time on something that is not you know worth spending that much time on it when you know you could you could like uh, um, you know you could do it well and just move on so that's something I try to try to uh, work on like yeah getting getting more things done and not getting like stuck in in something yeah I mean, these guys who put the questions, put us at a bad spot. Let us know these questions really, before, guys. Really, really serious, <laughs> serious yeah. questions. Exactly. Uh, and, and again, on that note, we have the final question. Uh, it's like a whole uh, therapy okay. session again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this is a heavy one. Wait for it. Still. <laughs> one. The this hell? is the last one. This is the last one. Uh, Jonas Skinneri uh, asks, um, "What is your view on origination of the universe and everything in it? Cards, pure luck, some <laughs> some yet unknown forces of nature, or something completely different? Uh, basically, what is your personal theory of everything?" Forty. Here, here we go. <laughs> I'll take the, it's, where's, the it's, where's the pillow? I wait that the others answer. Wake up tomorrow. It's my turn. It's 42 version 1.5. 42 version 1. Okay. I don't fucking know. <laughs> now give me a beer. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's it. That's my theory. But I guess we've talked about this a little bit before. We talked about similar things, yeah. Religions and podcasts. Yeah, we have done. Yeah. When was it? I don't remember which podcast. Let's put it this way. From my side, I'm still searching. No conclusion. Absolutely, yeah. Same here. But yeah, I do yeah. have all the sides that I listen to and I hear and I don't keep my mind like never mind it. Don't Matt. keep your head mind shut. Exactly. Please observe. If, be if skeptic. Ne- open minded. If New Zealand could be the edge of the earth, then I don't know, edge of the edge of the flat fat earth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, edge of fat, fat, fat earth. Fat, yeah. fat earth, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, anything is possible. Basically, you could be right now flying in the skies, and just that sun is oh, there. Yeah. Setting. You see, the sun is the sun is there, and the sun is behind <laughs> me. I'm... I don't know which planet is he at right now, but he's got a good internet connection well, from there. Who the hell knows that? I don't even know it myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say I'm I'm not really searching for any gods or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Because, but but you are I'm, <laughs> but I am. <laughs> But I, I, I am interested in a lot of, you know, sci-fi topics and, you know, space stuff and origins of humans and, and science. But, uh, you know, I don't, I don't believe in gods, but Dep- I don't ru- ru- god, rule it out either. It depends on which god you're referring to. Are you referring to the god of the representation that we assume that one guy sitting in the sky and waving? If, it, if it's Odin, or, or if it is Odin, or <laughs> yeah, I mean, he has ice cream. Then I find it. If it's Odin and he has ice cream, then maybe. Yeah. Um, it's it's, okay, it's I, I, interesting. I, I think about these things, you know, personal time and you know, when writing lyrics and music. But not not any in religious kind of a way. Yeah. Yet again, what do you mean by religious? What pre- representation of religion are you discussing here? Like I'm not a religious person. But what does your representation of religion is? I mean, of course, I do understand, but many many people would have a different pre- representation. Like organized religion. Yeah, organized religion, religion, exactly. Like, 
like this. These people believe this thing, and then there's these other people that believe in this thing. Institutionalized. So there's like thousands of gods. Right. So everyone is like an 99.9% of atheists. So, yeah, religion is just a part of my life. Mm -hmm. But I do That's... enjoy a lot of like, you know, ancient things like cave paintings, like of almost like helicopters and what has happened in the past. I'm kind of interested about that stuff. For me, yeah. everything is interesting. Yeah. The moment you put Whatever a full stop, the moment you put a full stop in getting to know about things and making a determination, that's the most foolish thing a human mind could do. Mm. Meaning when you put a full stop to the a fact, so to speak, then that's it. You can never put a full stop on the on this fact that you know the guitar 24-7 or you know the guitar 100%. You can never know it. You know how to play everything. You know how to read, write notes. No. In a certain way, like, yeah, sure. All this thing is kind of like everything. All this is a journey. Precisely. Everything is changing yeah. or improving or whatever word you want to call it. We are just Going here, onwards. here for a little while, so better to make most of it. And the uh, the most important thing is instead of as well as what we do is like externally, we try to aim and try to figure out things beyond our physical form externally. The only thing that we should do as well in the con in with that conjunction as well is to internally see things as well. Because the representation of what we see externally is quite similar to what the representation is internally. It's just a metaphor or metaphysics that completely changes but yet the <clears throat> initial attributes or the the um, functions of certain things that we externally observe are very same to what internally things are for instance so there there shit tons to learn and shit tons to observe but when you, once again, when you put a full stop to it and go like, yeah, well, that's it. Because he said that, or she said it, or that book said it, and that book said it. All right, then. Yeah. It's like, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like, aha. Uh -huh. Bass should only have four strings. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Guitar should only have six strings. Ah, okay. <laughs> I don't. I don't need a touch screen. No. Okay. I don't know about the guitar thing, but the other thing was an insult. I think. Nee, 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 nee. Exactly. They should only have two strings. <laughs> should there be? Should there be? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, bass player comes oh, far ahead. Should okay, now the fun be. times. Oh, okay. Start with the three guitar players over here. Hey. Well, first comes the bass, to, then I comes the to. bass player. <laughs> What's that, Asim, what you were saying? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that was the, at the end here. That I need to say this three guitar player thing. Somebody has to. Take the martyr part out here now. This, this is this is a question to all you big bang theorist believers. What was the frequency of the bang? Do you think there was just one frequency? All right. Well, the bang changes its frequency. It starts from somewhere. No. What are you talking about frequency? We're talking about frequency, right? What was it? <laughs> the fragrance of the frequency. 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 Yeah, yeah. 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 That's that's, a, that's yeah. the fragrance we need. Gasoline station. Yeah. Fragrance. Explode right, onion. That's, something that makes. That's where the Big Bang yeah. happened. Think about it. Gasoline, onions frying, kaboom. Sweat. Yeah. Okay, so we have. We have come full circle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> what a way yeah. to end a podcast. Amazing. Yeah. That sounds like a wrap. <laughs> really, really tough questions, guys. At the really, end, really. we should maybe talk about how we want to wrap this up now and analyze that. Like onion wrap or? Or a sweat wrap or something. <laughs> I, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready for this. Oh. I needed alcoholic beer, not the non alcoholic. Uh-huh. Oh, next time. If I, next time, yeah. Oh my God. That would be. That was really it. No more questions. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Uh, oh. okay. That's it. I think we this ended up being pretty pretty long one anyway. So this might be a new record. One Could of be. the longer ones for sure. No, but we had a bit of a technical difficulty, so we have to take True. that time off. Yeah, I mean, maybe. I'm just... But hey, I mean, thank you, thank you for thanks all again for the great questions. Yeah, thanks thank guys, guys for us. answering. Thanks you guys, guys for supporting us in Patreon and everywhere else really appreciate that yeah and today we, we picked a couple of questions from the social media as well on patreon of course you can you can uh, sign up and and then the patrons get to ask the questions for sure if you log into the forum or even in just the patreon messages you can send us a direct message there if you don't want to join the forum you can ask a question there and otherwise we're going to randomly pick some questions in the future episodes as well so you can ask them um in the youtube comments or on or on facebook or on instagram what questions in the windows and forum are answered for sure those are answered for sure yeah and we got a Daily. lot of interesting content in patreon so if you haven't joined in yet you should definitely give it a try you can always step away after a month if you don't feel like it but um, it's a subscription-based thing, so you know you can join for one month or as long as you want to support the band and get the content. But there's a e- lot. Easy, of- easy. Yeah, even if you uh, join up for one month, you can see all the past year of content. Yeah, yeah, we have. There's a lot, lot whole to year see. worth of stuff. Yeah, a lot lessons behind the scenes stuff, live videos. Then of course forum. I think we have hundreds and hundreds of posts by the band members at the moment uh, so usually pretty pretty active discussion there and even coming next week i will be doing another live pod not live podcast but a live stream for our lovely patrons so those what are, is it about it's still the continuation of learning the star child so oh, what? showcasing nice. still taking the continuation of how I learned Star Child or how I have learned and what's my method and so on. So there's a lot of those kind of content available. Nice. Perfect. Cool. I think it's a wrap this time. Um, Everybody stay safe and well. And then until next time. Yeah. Enjoy the summer. Enjoy the summer.